we get the best of both worlds. We get to see it on TV, we get uh, everything talked to us, and we get to see the walls. So. And the mountains in the background. Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. It is incredible. Well, this is our final night here in Innsbruck. We've had a European speed competition, we've had para competitions, Boulder, and this is the lead, the first one of the year. And there are the eight athletes. Who yeah, it's been a full week. Not just for athletes, but also all the managers and uh, coaches and competitive. And uh, yeah, just all the staff that have been working for each of the teams. You know, they've had a, a long week of just supporting athletes and, uh, you know, having their teams do the best that they can. And yeah, that, that uh, can't go understood. <laughs> no, absolutely. It's, it's full on, especially, you know, the, the teams like yourself, Team USA, who's traveled. You're on the road for a long time at the moment. For sure, yeah. I think uh, last year I pretty much like was in Europe for uh, just at that 90-day mark uh, for my visa, uh, and uh, I'll probably hit a similar amount this year as well. Um, so it can be kind of taxing, but it's also uh, a, you know an incredible experience to be able to see the world from a different light. Well, let's have a look at our wall. Now, this 3D diagram is done a couple of days before the route's finalized, so there's a couple of tweaks, just a excuse that but basics are there 10 meters overhanging 15 meters tall starts on the orange hole and it's separated into sections via colors starting off on the red down at the bottom and not too bad to start things off with but then this these ghost holes that everyone's been talking about the dual texture and hard to see the bit which is good to stand on and then into the yellow section uh, pretty full-on buggy Slopers after that, as you can see, a couple of tick marks, and then that's it, standing on the volume to finish. And a big jump on the corner of that wall to a jug near the penultimate clip. Yeah, I think it's really interesting, uh, especially in like a, a lead final or a boulder final, uh, the setters are really trying to use the most novel holds that they can. Uh, so a lot of the times athletes haven't seen the holds, haven't experienced them, haven't played on them. So uh, it adds this level of uh, maybe confusion or uh, uncertainty to the route that you wouldn't necessarily get uh, on you know, your standard gym route. Um, and uh, it also is interesting just in general, like they really like putting these like new holds into the finals or into like a semi-finals. Um, and some teams maybe have like seen them before. Maybe you've seen some of them like in a previous like boulder round or a previous lead round. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's new for everyone um, for sure. And now we're getting shots of the backstage area. Usually our cameras aren't allowed in here, but they are in Innsbruck apparently. And this is where the athletes are waiting. This is the holding area. And I can see Natalia, I'm not going to talk about it because I can see it, but uh, cooling off the feet, which is, I've never thought of that. Yeah, that's a great idea for sure. In uh, climbing shoes, your feet definitely can get a little bit sweaty in there. So it's nice to uh, have the most uh, friction feet that you can. And <laughs> that's a great feet, way of, like of doing it. Yeah. And those, those are uh, actually really nice, like uh, large coolers that they have in the, the back tent. Uh, that tent can definitely get pretty hot, so it's nice that there's uh, some additional resources um, to uh, help cool. And there is Helen Janikot. She's up first, so she's tied in already. And just a fun fact for you, that uh, iPod thing she's got there, there's no Bluetooth connection allowed, and it's actually quite difficult for the athletes to find a device nowadays where you can listen to music that isn't connected to the internet. Yeah, I have one, uh, like an iPod Nano, and it's probably from like 2007 or something like that. So it's pretty cool. But, you know, it's like one of the few spaces in uh, modern society that you don't have any connection to the outside world, um, which I think is pretty special, honestly. Yeah, I agree with you. It's, it's nice. And Helen is in her own world there, headphones on, as she puts some liquid chalk on. That will act as a bit of a base layer for her skin. Yeah, and in the, the bouldering round, I know a lot of athletes were sort of abusing that fan as much as they could. Um, the, the fan I'm talking about is like in between Brooke and Natalia. Uh, so basically, like they would be like, um, you know, pulling up their shirt to have it <laughs> blow onto their chest or like putting their hands very close or heads, anything you can, any body part that you can get to try to cool down. We need one of the commentary boxes. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to follow Helene as she makes her way from the backstage area walks around the awning, the black thing you can see on the left protecting her from the audience's eyes, but in a second, all eyes are going to be on her through this opening, and then she can start to see the crowd, and the crowd can see her. Medals weight on the left, which I always think is yeah. very intimidating. So there's a little bit of purgatory, I would say, this walk. <laughs> yes, exactly that. <laughs> well, you don't know what's going to happen. No, you have no idea, and it was quite cool to see that, actually. I like that view. 
Yeah, I find this period, so you have 40 seconds to get on the wall, and I find this uh, period quite interesting. Um, so she's already obviously ran through the beta, but uh, since she's the first athlete, it probably hasn't had much time to sort of sink in. Uh, so now she was able to run through it a little bit faster, uh, dial her beta. She's taking off some socks there so that uh, any extra residue or uh, like dirt on that might uh, touch her shoes uh, wouldn't be there when she steps on the wall. That's a great idea. Yeah, and here we go. Women's final will be followed by the men's. And a fairly straightforward start for the women, not too bad. Out to a blocked side pull there with the hand, but a fairly steady beginning for them. Locks off that right hand, pops out to the side pull. Yeah, it definitely looks steady, uh, but you know, any any of these moves could feel kind of uncertain, uh, could kind of throw off the athletes. So uh, she looks like she's taking a little bit careful just to, to be sure that she finds it. Oh, well, there we go. I mean, we said it, and we immediately see a slip from Helen. That was a big foot pop, obviously a mistake, and she will take a moment away from the cameras here because that will be disappointment for her. That's such a bummer. She has uh, so much capability, so I'm sure we'll see her back on the stage, but that's just so hard when, uh, you know, on the on the second clip, um, having not, not being able to show your best. Oh, I mean, all of that build-up, the warm-up to go out, fall on the second clip, where hearts go out to Helene. Let's see what happened. What's the left foot? Oh, yeah, it just slipped. She was quite stretched out on it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like her foot might have been a little bit uh, angled, and uh, as she sort of grabbed that next hold, um, it looks like it was uh, kind of pushing maybe the wrong direction. And it also looks like that hold is quite bad, very slopey, and she might have thought it was a little bit more uh, indented or uh, a crimp. Well, that so. was a shock at the beginning. And psychologically for Brooke coming next, you know, she would, in her head, she thinks she's got at least a couple of minutes before she goes on. Now she's thinking, goodness me, like, what is that first couple of moves like? Yeah, I think Brooke's really good at staying inside her head, I would say. Um, so I don't think it'll affect her too much. But I think that it, uh, I'm, I'm sure she'll be careful, know that it, uh, you know, the beginning is hard. But I'm sure she knew that before, too. But just added, um, yeah, reassured. It could be an element of heat. I mean, last year's women's final, if you remember back to then, <laughs> hello, there was a... Uh, there was, it was last about 45 minutes, and it had been baking in the sun, so you do wonder whether that heat has affected some of the holes. Yeah, last year the, the females actually started in the sun. They were first as well, um, and I definitely think it affected the round overall. Like, I remember some athletes saying that they felt almost sunburnt after climbing in it. Um, so I think they pushed back the finals this year so that all the athletes could um, kind of perform in the shade, which is, is much nicer for sure. Yeah, and you can see the sun hasn't hit the wall at the moment. There's also quite a few clouds across the sky so that is a bit of a blessing, but not much of a breeze. All right, so standing there, eyes closed, is Brooke Rabatou. She drops the fan. Yeah, and Brooke has really become a, a legend in the climbing community, I would say, over time. You know, former Olympian, has, uh, you know, won her first bouldering World Cup this year. Uh, so she's really, I would say, like, on one, as the kids might say. <laughs> uh, You're a kid, yeah. Jesse. I'm a kid, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Um, so really excited to see her, her lead season as well after having such a successful bouldering one. This is going to be exciting. So first time for Brooke in the lead finals. DJ drops a tension tune in the background. I'll say for the year, she definitely has competed in lead finals in the past. <laughs> yeah, she has very experienced. Still 22. Yeah, and she actually just uh, finished her degree this year, which is pretty cool. Not too bad of a, a start as well. Win a World Cup, get a degree. <laughs> it's not bad, is it? Yeah. <laughs> as years go, and she will want to be careful through here. She know Helen would have fallen early. Yeah, and while my uh, hands are definitely sweating, I think it's great that they're um, setting hard for the women, especially early on. Uh, I think it'll uh, add a le level of difficulty that uh, you know sometimes uh, lacks for the female side of things, um, like early on. So it's nice to like not necessarily have like feel good moves. Come on, Brooke. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Big cut loose from Brooke. And I think that's the difference in her and Helen. She went for the move, whereas Helen was trying to do it more statically. Yeah, having that foot cut and just committing to the jump, I think, was really smart of her. All right, so Brooke is underway. Our nerves slightly calmed. And as Jesse said, sweaty fingers all around. It's, uh, it's impossible not to watch this and feel every move that the athletes are making. 
you want to be climbing it for them sometimes, it's like, uh, yeah, it's intense. And you can tell she's kind of taking it uh, careful in this beginning, which I think is smart because a lot of these holds, like as I might have mentioned before, like she hasn't necessarily felt before. Uh, some of these will have like uh, jibs on them that you kind of have to find. Um, so I think it's really smart to, uh, you know, not not overly rush it. And knowing that uh, Helen had, uh, you know, some struggle in the beginning, I think that she'll want to, um, yeah, move a little bit slower. Or at least I would, but maybe I'm a <laughs> bad judgment there. <laughs> right, her feet are on the big ghost volume. There is friction on that volume, but uh, it's not very good. There's not that much friction, so you have to focus. Um, I heard these holds are actually uh, hand-painted today. Really? Would be kind of cool. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, none of them are, or they're all unique. Um, none of them are the same. That is a brilliant fact. That yeah, I'm pretty cool. That's awesome. It could be a wrong fact, too, but... <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. You're in the commentary yeah. box. Right, right. <laughs> My word goes. Exactly. All right, Brooks on the first really tricky section, this jump up. Nice, Brooke. And cut loose, gets the left foot in the pocket on that ghost hold. She's really known uh, for having this three finger drag. I think she's super powerful and strong in it and could kind of hang out all day. So good to see it out. <laughs> yeah, and the heel hooks as well. She's got that left one locked in as she swings it back to hold the cut loose. And then a powerful move. Ooh. Starts here and a bit of a slip from her. Using the toe to try to get some purchase, but tricky sequence to get established on these yellow volumes. Look at those double heels from Brooke. Yeah, and quite flexible right now, too. I've always known her for that as well. <laughs> yeah. So it's cool to see it working. Yeah, she's got them there uh, locked in, but there's a, quite a bumpy move up. There's a jib she's going for on the left. Picks it first time and then locks the right toe in. Yeah, none of these moves look e easy by any means. No, I was about to say, it's, it's really ramped it up. I wonder what the big X's are on the wheel as well. You see the blue crosses. Oh, oh. But she falls on those blue crosses. Yeah. Yeah, that right hand just started opening a little bit and it looked like uh, it couldn't keep it together as much. But we'll see. Those, those you know, that first half of the route already looked very hard and I, w I wouldn't be surprised if another athlete might. Uh, you know, slip up around there as well. Yeah, super intense. We saw a shot of Team USA and the coaches down at the bottom. So this was the starting move that Helen fell on. Britain launched for it. Brought the right foot quickly back onto the jib and immediately made the clip. So she got through that danger zone. This was the move I thought might cause more problems, but she flowed through it beautifully. And then this is that three-finger drag that became, but this was the move. And it is a powerful undercut there to make that move up to quite a good hold. Yeah, it is hard too. That's like right where the angle changes. So uh, you would think that you might be able to rest right after that, um, or at least like take a little bit of weight off your arms and more on your feet. Um, so we'll see how uh, how the other ladies, or yeah, <laughs> ladies do there. Yeah, she, it was more of a foot slip than anything else. Watch her left foot. I don't know, it wasn't a foot slip. She just didn't quite get it. And as you said, because of the angle change, it's fairly blind, actually, because you're coming right up under the roof section of that. Yeah, it's sometimes really hard also to just start fighting, like, when you're not even, or almost just about, like, halfway up the route. Um, sometimes you feel like, you know, it's not time yet to uh, really, like, turn it on in that way. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a hard game. Yeah, absolutely is a hard game. And there is a woman who knows all about the difficulty. She's a multiple gold medal winner. Big smile on her face. And Jesse, that smile, you do the same thing, actually. You smile your way through things. Is this a, a deliberate tactic or like a psychological thing? We're trained in the US of how to smile, you know? That's <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I do think, uh, you know, um, Natalia and I have actually chatted about that a little bit before. I think, like, you know, sometimes even if you don't necessarily feel the emotion, like, just smiling uh, helps you become into a, a good mood. So um, I think that's really nice when, uh, yeah, you're able to give a smile and, you know, it also helps you um, in general on the route. Yeah, Natalia's had her share of psychological battles this year as well, and we've really seen her grind out, come back, bounce back from disappointments, and it's it's a testament to her how strong she is mentally. Yeah, I think it also just shows how strong the, the women's field is this year, um, and, uh, you know, she is definitely one of the best uh, boulders out there, as well as lead climbers, um, and, you know, when she's struggling, you know all the, the women are struggling as well. You can see the scoreboard on the left-hand side. 
If you go to the rules of leap climbing, you have to clip all of the quick draws, which is just clipped in the route in order. You can't miss ones out, you can't free solo your way up. And the scoring works how every hold is given a points value, and you get a plus for uh, going for the next hold. But you can't just slap up to it uh, in a last ditch attempt. You have to be moving your center of mass towards the next hold and your hands towards it. And it can be uh, an area that's appealed often by coaches. So the scores are preliminary until everything is confirmed, just to let you know. So Natalia with the right hand up and then she enters or begins to enter this dual tech section. Crowd really getting behind it, clapping along with the DJ. Natalia, in a similar kind of way to Brooke with the toe in. She'll look for a way to fit that quick draw above her head, extended so there's no rope drag because this wall is so overhanging. Jesse, the nerves must be kicking in for you. Yeah, right for now. sure. I'm definitely sweating a lot over here. <laughs> yeah, I really want uh, her to be able to do well and show her best. So for sure. three fingers in the pocket. Natalia reaches up to the black volume climbing really quickly at the moment. Yeah, and really solid too. Brooke, she looks really confident, I would say, overall so far. She does. It's very. She hasn't doubted a single moment. Yeah, and I think that's always something I've admired about her uh, in general. Like her confidence is uh, quite apparent and. Um, I think that it's helped her a lot in bouldering, and you can see that she's just moving through these moves um, with efficiency and uh, with grit, which is, yeah, great, really awesome. And this is where things do. ramp up a little bit. This is where it gets tough. Right heel up, and we're nearing the section where Brooke fell. Nice, oh, another early fall. So Natalia goes, currently in second place, a little less than halfway up the wall. Yeah, this route looks incredibly bouldery. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually, yeah. yeah. It seems to be split into bouldery sections as well, especially those moves we just saw. For sure. And, you know, at the heart of any uh, rope climb is a bunch of boulders linked together. So, um, you know, it's nice to, to have that uh, perspective. Um, I think that uh, Natalia really did a good job of moving efficiently and quickly through these different motions. Um, and uh, it'll be interesting how, you know, <laughs> Natalia and Brooke both won a bouldering World Cup this year. So, you know, if you haven't done that, I wonder how these moves will feel. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that was Natalia. That ground up perspective, the B-layers perspective. That's what I've been calling it. That's what they see. So she got the right hand locked in, but the heel wasn't quite there. You see this again, she reaches up, gets the crimp in, and the foot seemed to slip or, or wasn't quite established. Yeah, it's hard to tell exactly what happened there. I think that, uh, you know, this seems very power endurance-y, uh, and sometimes when you're expecting an endurance route, it can be hard to switch into, um, you know, just like uh, fighting and gripping uh, really hard, like, bouldery moves. Um, so I think that uh, she definitely was able to do that for a lot of the route, um, and it'll be interesting to see how other athletes can perform there. But it looked like she yeah, climbed, climbed smoothly, and I'm sure she'll be disappointed, though, to not be able to fight a little bit further. Okay, well, uh, finals so far. We've had three athletes falling before the halfway point. Mia Crample is up next. And Mia Crample's taken a bit of a break for a while. Last time we saw her was in Seoul for Boulder. So she's been away training, and that might make a difference here. The fact that she's gave, not gave up, but she stopped on the Boulder season and then really concentrated on lead training. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it can go either way, I would say. Like, I think that uh, taking a break can be, you know, a really important aspect of an athlete's performance. Um, you know, not being in this performance mindset and just having some solid uh, training time. Um, but, you know, it also can be hard because you kind of build this confidence through performance and, uh, you know, having uh, go going from one route to another um, and showing that you're able to do each of these routes uh, in concession um, or consecutively. So um, it'll be... Yeah, interesting to see how, how she plays with it. Well, we, well, she made the move. Both me and Jesse sort of like paused there as she made the jump. It's nervy. Once you know someone's fallen on a section, it kind of gets the heart going when you see them in again. Yeah, and I think she was smart with uh, not using the hold that looks very bad for the foot. Uh, she switched feet there and uh, made that jump look a lot smoother. 
So Mir through the first part of the route fairly easily. And she's going to have to work out how to get the feet locked in to make these slow moves count. But Rabatou currently leading the way on 25 plus, followed by Natalia and then Mia Crample in third. Up to the jib on the right of the volume. And then she's looking for the dish, which again, pretty blind, but it's, it's an instinctive place for that dish, that pocket thing to be. Straight into it, she swings the feet over. Awkward oh. this. Nice. Unwinds and gets the sloper and she'll jump up to the next one. Yeah, looking strong here. But as we've discovered, getting through this next part is not easy. So she brings the left knee high up in order to make the clip. Lots of chalk being used. It's getting yeah. cooler and cooler in the stadium, it's still warm. Yeah, so once again, the blue X is uh, to show where they're clipping from or where they have to clip from. So if Nathan fails to clip uh, from that position, they would be called down. Thank you for clarifying that, yeah. All right, so Mir has a heel in, bumps up and just sticks the left hand. But this heel is where we saw Natalia fall. She's having to fight here. Oh. She slips there as well. Yeah. So I think that they're being a lot more strict with uh, what a plus is uh, in this competition, I've noticed, from previous years. Um, I think there might have been a rule change as well, but uh, basically they need to uh, show that their hips or their body are moving towards the hold as opposed to just a hand in the air. Um, so before, like I think people uh, have just like reached a hand in the air as they're falling, and that's been a plus, but uh, no longer is that true. So I think that uh, Brooke being able to demonstrate that her body was moving up towards the hold might make all the difference here. Yeah, certainly so. Well, she's still on that top spot. Mia was looking comfortable. Yeah, I also think that uh, her position of her foot, being able to take that heel out and uh, press on the top of that right volume, um, definitely looked like uh, the good, the, the right spot for the foot to be. You can see how many have slipped. That left hand only just made it. Yeah, where her foot slipped, there's lots of rubber there from where other people slid down it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, as soon as you start seeing rubber, like I think that all the options for do I put a heel, do I put a toe here, uh, start coming out. And I think that, uh, you know, that adds to sort of like the stress of being on the wall and trying to make these, uh, you know, very important, seemingly consequential decisions over time. All right, well, that was Mia's run. Coming backwards in a really tricky move. And it wasn't one of the root setters. Certainly when I when they talked it through with me, they weren't saying that section was, you know, full. they said it's a tricky jump, but they weren't expecting as many falls there as we've seen. Yeah, it seems like they've really turned it up, uh, as I said before, for the women, um, which is good because I think the, the last four athletes, you know, placed maybe 10 to 15 holes higher than some of the rest of the field. Um, so I think some of these other athletes will really... Um, you know, be able to show themselves on that top part of the wall. I know it kind of is like, oh, well, why are they falling on the bottom half? But it's because the field is so strong that uh, they're going to be able to, to get up there. Yeah, and there's nothing worse than watching athletes cruise up something. And certainly Yanni has been quite vocal about this. Lots have, but they want to be trying as hard as possible. You know, you don't want a route where there's maybe a hard move at the top. You, know, you want to be battling all the way. For sure. And I think that, uh, you know, these athletes have been training for uh, so much of the year. It's really nice to be able to show everything they have on this stage and having hard enough routes um, are exactly what they need in order to be able to do that. Oh, now, this is interesting. So, oh, this is a replay. I was about to say, I, didn't, I literally thought LM was coming back on. I thought it was a technical incident. But no, we're watching a bit of a, a replay of the moves so far. So, close hands some big falls and this move has proved problematic as Natalia moments before made the clips easy got the heels in and uh, this camera is on the roof of the gym and it's got I've been told by someone who knows more about this stuff than me that it's got a hundred times zoom apparently wow there we go that sounds like a lot of zoom it's a lot of zoom <laughs> And Mia Crabble was our last athlete out before this little pause in proceedings while we reset. 
And Jesse, you've been sat on those sofas quite a lot. What, what do you talk about when you're on the sofas? Yeah, a lot of the time you're comparing beta and uh, trying to understand, um, you know, what one athlete did versus the other. Especially now that there are um, four athletes uh, who have already climbed, uh, people are kind of curious. Like, I, I don't. When you get off the wall, you don't exactly know like what your score is or how you might have compared. So it's kind of interesting to hear like how an athlete did this beta or that section. Um, so that's usually what what they chat about. Um, but you know, I think it's it's also just like <laughs> a little bit of a commiserate with your uh, you know competitors and um, especially if your friends like working with Talia are like I think being able to uh, you know cheer each other up and you know keep good spirits is very important. I'm always amazed at that because. Let's say you have a disappointing round. I think I just want to disappear. You have to be out there in the spotlight, sort of all the focus on you. It's uh, it's pretty tough, actually. Yeah, for sure. It definitely can be pretty emotional, like being in any like finals or semifinals. So, uh, yeah, to like uh, continue to stay on in front of everyone else, I think can be uh, quite challenging. But um, you know, it's nice for the rest of the crowd. Exactly. All right, here we go. Jesse Piltz is on. She is a local hero. She's won multiple competitions, world championships in this city. And don't count her out from doing something unique here because that crowd and the energy they give you is special. Yeah, hometown advantage for sure. Yeah. All right, she's got two clips in. Hold your breath if you're supporting Jessie because we know this is the first of the problematic moves. Gets the left foot in, and she's going to go for a Helen style, more static approach to it. Yeah, that was impressive having her foot stay on. Uh, you could tell she stayed really tight there, um, and I think that she yeah, executed that great. Right, she's almost through the orange part. Chalks up down low, gets the heel locked in. She makes the clip easily, and then. Yeah, I'm sure she's aware that, uh, you know, it's probably moving pretty fast uh, through ISO. So you're kind of sitting back in ISO wondering, like, oh, is this going fast or is it going slow? Uh, and based on that, you can kind of tell, like, how high up on the roof people are getting. So I'm sure she could tell that uh, athletes aren't getting too high yet. So um, maybe keeping it a little bit more careful down low makes sense. I was told that sometimes athletes look up and see quick draws swinging For where sure. the athlete fell. Do you do that? Are you a quick draw swinger? I do like to see that, yeah. I think some athletes don't like seeing, uh, you know, where athletes, other athletes got, but I think it's really nice to have, like, this idea in your head of, like, okay, I want to get there. And I like having, like, those checkpoints throughout a route um, that, uh, you know, I, I hit this point, I hit that point. Um, I think that you can kind of tell from the ground where distinct cruxes are, um, and then also, like, knowing an additional crux uh, that you might not have seen before or an athlete might have gone to uh, can be kind of helpful. Mia did quite an awkward cross on this move. Jesse doing it differently. She got the left hand up, bumps the right hand, and the crowd really getting behind her, and they'll have to because they'll know what's coming. Yeah, I think it's always really cool when setters are able to create movement that can be done in multiple ways. Um, I think that's kind of understated. Like, I think people are like, oh, like, I really want this move to be, like, forced or um, something like that. But I think it's cool if you can do a move in multiple ways and allows you to do some decision making uh, on the wall. Yeah, nice, Jesse. Yeah, just got that Looking bump. Strong. And I'm sure she can tell that this, this section is hard now. Yeah, so. she's having to turn the try hard on. So left foot into the heel. Hits that precisely. And you know, I think the crowd is also a good indicator as well. Um, you know, if they're cheering for you really loud, you can tell that this has been a section where other athletes have struggled and you can see her trying to figure out the section. Oh, nice. Oh. oh. Oh, she touched it, and as you said, the crowd roared, but it was only for a second, and then it slid. But that is provisionally the first place for Jessie due to count back to the last round. She qualified in a higher position, so although she got the same score, Jessie looks back up. Yeah, I think it's really interesting so far, like all the athletes have used slightly different foot beta on that movement, so it'll be interesting to see uh, when an athlete finally does that, which one they choose. Uh, like either the right foot on the high volume, the left foot on the high volume, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there as well. Well, it's been a quick one, and we're not far into this comp, and already we're on our final three. Let's watch Jesse again. Made the clips easy through this first part. And you can see that. I'm looking for the hand-painted bits now. You've given me that little bit of knowledge. You can, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that I can see it. 
So that was the left hand. It's not on very much. There is a, a jib underneath for the thumb. There you can see it. Match the right heel to the right hand. Just about a while locking it in. Of course, it's slow motion, so everything looks dramatic. And then that's the coaches shouting up. They knew it was an important move. It's a, oh. I said that was a good hold. It's not a good hold. It's a bad slow Not a good hold at all, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. We'll see this also for the guys route, but um, you know they're putting a lot of holds on this wall that uh, were also in the bouldering qualification or semifinals. And uh, you know, if it's in a bouldering round and it's on a boulder, it probably isn't a very good hold. That's a really good point. Yeah. All right, the holds tend to blend into one in my head, so you're the expert on that one. But it's a good point because the athletes do learn holds. Like you seem to have this encyclopedic knowledge of everything on the wall. And before the uh, semi-final round, the setters were saying that they've specifically brought in holds from other places, and I was like, surely the Austrian climbers know them. They're like, no, 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 it's, uh, it's pretty new for everyone. Yeah, exactly, and I think that uh, really is important for keeping it fair, uh, making sure that other athletes haven't, you know, if like just the Slovenian team or uh, just the Austrian team has like felt these holds and no one else has had access to it, uh, I think that makes, you know, a little bit unfairness in the sport. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Super excited to see what Yanni can do out here. Yeah, is she fresh? She was over the moon to win that gold boulder gold. And last year, remember, when everyone else was falling, Yanya pulled something special out. So let's see what she can do here. I don't know why, Jesse, but I'm more nervous for this comp than any other one so far. It's, it's, it's I think that's lead. You know? Yeah, I think it is. Because <laughs> anything can happen. Exactly, and you sometimes, and you are the worst for that. I always <laughs> think you're about to fall off, and you don't. I'm honored, just like keeping you on your toes. Oh, you really do. Yeah, I think it's also that. worth noting that um, four of the eight female finalists were also in the bouldering final. Um, I think that's you know just shows the level that uh, these athletes are at. Um, and, you know, also uh, Cheyun has, like, been in uh, a final in bouldering before as well. So, yeah, super strong field in both lead and bouldering. So Yanya rocks up that right hand on the crimp. She had a little tiny slip down low as she made the move up, but moved through it okay. It's a double clip. Yeah, slips are, slips are you know, do happen, but I think it's all about how you respond uh, in the moment, how you can relax back from, um, you know, maybe having a little bit of a mistake here or there. And I think she's always been really talented at, uh, you know, fighting through uh, any challenges that might arise on the wall. Um, so, yeah, super excited to see what, what's going on here. Uh, Yanya is on the ghost holds, and she comes into our view in the commentary box as well. About a third of the way through. Spotlight on her. She does that cross as well, same as Mia did. She's definitely making these moves that uh, other athletes seem to struggle with look way easier. Yeah, very strong as she rotates through the shoulders, makes the clip. All right, here we go. What can Yanya do? You know she's in boulder form. This is a bouldery section of the route, but will she be feeling tired from the last couple of days? Right heel is locked in, as is the left. Easily into that hand movement. So if there's a smile there from Yanya. Left foot. Oh, she statics it. And look, that crowd reaction, that's what you were talking about. They know what they're watching. For sure. And she knows that she's doing well now. And but she also knows that uh, more athletes are coming that are stronger than the previous contingency. So I'm sure she's aware that she needs to turn on up here as well. Sometimes Yanya has this thing where you can see her visibly re relax. And often she gets that from the crowd. You know, when they're cheering, when she knows she's in a dominant position, she sometimes just calms down a little bit. Yeah, and I think that's also the lead climber in her, I would say. Like, when she gets to uh, a hold where she can straighten her arm, she does that, and she takes a rest when she can. Yeah, this is really one of the only rests for the women, and she's got a great knee bar in, standing on the jib with the right foot, but moves away from it quickly. Oh, struggling. Just gets the right foot on the jib, but she's got to clip. And I'm not sure if she's thinking about the clip yet or if she's considering a plus. 
Because if she moves any further left, she won't be able to reach that. So Yanya has a decision. Can she get something back? She could maybe hook it with her foot from above, but there she goes. Oh, right at the very edge of her reach. It's hard just to clip it. This is a fight from Yanya, and it's good to see. Big move up towards the tick mark. Three-finger drag on that. That was great finding the jib. That can be really challenging sometimes. Yanya goes up towards a pinch but falls, and she really had to fight there. That was awesome. That was a great performance. That was good to see. I can't believe she was able to rest on that uh, high yellow volume too. That looked so bad. <laughs> well, I was like, you could see her be like, okay, am I going to go for the, the plus point? I'm pumped. She decided to shake out, and I think it was the right decision because she made quite a few more moves after that. Yeah, I'm going to guess that you uh, probably want to clip that clip a little bit lower from the big blue hold. Um, I'm sure she realized that when she sort of got higher, but uh, that looked like such a hard clip. Like, that honestly looked like the crux of the climb. You can like see her teeth, that that she's gritting her teeth as she made it. It also seemed like there was a jib on the uh, high, like slightly higher part of that last blue volume that she was on that I'm not sure if she actually saw or not. Um, it can be quite hard to see the jibs uh, that are in these screw holds, or the, the larger volumes from the ground when you're previewing, uh, mainly because you can't go out as far as the crowd goes um, or from like the great view that we have from the commentary box. Um, so yeah, it can be hard to see like where all the uh, hidden holds are. Oh, look at that face. That's, that's one of the best clipping faces I've ever seen yeah, on, a, awesome. on a wall. Absolute limit for Yanya. And then she fell going up to this next move, a nasty pinch after all that. Yeah, so I think that the beta might have been to flip here into that other jib and then go out right instead of going up left. Um, but we'll see how other athletes do it. Yeah, it was right there, wasn't it? I think she was just boxed out of her mind at that point. Kind of missed the thumb, but she was low on it anyway. All right, well, Yanya sets our new high point. It was just before the route starts to traverse to the right, and there's a big jump after that sequence. Shake of her head, but I think she enjoyed the fight. And look at the view of the mountains in the background as the sun starts to sink. <laughs> and yeah, it seems Slovenia know that, that that could be enough out there. I mean, it's certainly enough for a podium because we, well, it is a podium for sure because we've only got two athletes to come. Yeah, super impressive. Okay, Ai Mori comes out. She had a tricky boulder final round. It was reachy for her. Maybe it was a power thing, but she's come back now and looks very strong in her home habitat on that lead wall. For sure. Yeah, I think this is the Aimori style that we know and love. <laughs> yeah, she will uh, just keep on climbing, enjoying all the crimps and the static moves that she does. Yeah, I think it's really cool when athletes can kind of bring their own style as well to uh, the lead wall or the bouldering wall, honestly. Um, and I think that she has a unique style um, that's, yeah, very defined, uh, uh, slow crimps, uh, blocking off to holds. Um, she's just really talented at it, and it's really cool to see her uh, move on the wall compared to other athletes. Yeah, it's completely different. Sometimes she just refuses to make a static move and finds outrageous ways through it. Sorry, a, a dynamic move. <laughs> All right, reaches up and makes the clip. And this is the first move. But it's either going to be reachy or she's going to have to do a little jump. She does. Well, that bouldering training paying off. Yeah, she's, she's been working on it. You know, she has, and she has been getting better at it as well. Definitely. Yeah, to make a bouldering final is no easy feat in this uh, line of women. So look at the leaderboard on the left. Janja Garmbra way out ahead, 39 plus, followed by Jesse Pilts and Brooke Rabatu. That's our current top three. But we have two athletes coming out who can certainly challenge them for that position. Yeah, sometimes I feel like uh, the bottom of lead routes can be a little bit <laughs> dull to watch, but I'm super excited to see this, these sections just because they're so powerful and, and challenging. Um, it's really neat to see. Yeah, you are right. Sometimes when it's... Oh, she swings again. Yeah, sometimes when it's super easy down low, especially up here, where you, 
you kind of run out of things to say because you know it's easy, but almost every move down low could spit them off. Totally. Right. Yeah, I'm sweating for her as well. <laughs> I just have to stop. So I need some water. <laughs> he bumps into the, uh, the pocket. High left foot. Yeah, and what just happened with her on that pocket uh, is actually something worth noting, just that, uh, you know, I think her style really lends itself to, you know, if I miss a hold, I'm able to stay in this locked position and figure out uh, where the hold is, how to find it. Um, so I think that's really impressive uh, and a benefit to climbing like she does. All right, eye is on the boulder section. Up with the right hand on the pinch. Just bumps the hand towards the jib. Super strong. Yeah, and she might fit quite nicely into this box here. Big move to the sloper. Now gets the thumb on the jib. Besides the toe, not the heel. She's really locked into that right crimp, which is really cool to see. Left hand on the sloper and then immediately looks left towards the next foothold. But she has to make this click first and that right toe is shaking. But she's in and she'll be happy to get her right hand up. All right, well, she is in silver medal position at the moment. Crosses through. Eyes actually looking really good on really those strong. dynamic moves, yeah. For sure. I think it's, uh, you know, her style, like having the ability to do these dynamic moves or static moves and then just calm down a little bit and, uh, you know, keep those arms straight and rest a little bit, get a little bit back. Yeah, and she might fit, uh, again, nicely into this knee bar. Yanya got it but didn't use it for very long. I wonder if I's even going to see it. She hasn't at the moment. Yeah, this undercling actually looks quite bad. I thought it was a bigger hold, but it looks like just a screw hold. Yeah, I did too. I thought it was a jug, but it's not. I don't know if she sees that right foot. No, she hasn't even looked. It hasn't touched it. She does fall. She didn't use that right foot for the knee bone. She didn't use it for that move. Well, I can't beat Yanya today. She's in silver position. Yeah, I mean, it's hard when like there's a gigantic bullseye with all the seeming holds inside, and then to have another screw to the left of it. Um, you know, that's off target, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's sometimes hard to like see that as well. Um, but maybe she just felt like the heel would have been the right answer in that position. Wow, well, her run is done. Yeah, really impressive though. Super incredible. Yeah. I think especially that, that move that other uh, women have struggled with down lower, I think she made it look very comfortable and uh, she looked confident on it for sure. Yeah, she got a body position right the way over to the right, uh, whereas the others were jumping more straight onto it. So onto that, oh, she had a big foot, I didn't notice that during the run, she had a foot pop there, and this was the move. Got it, and immediately her eyes flicked to the left. And look, it's that, that right jib you can see by her foot, she didn't use at all. Yeah, it could have been quite hard to get her right foot up there, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, it is. it would have been interesting if she was able to get it up there, which she well, it's gone quickly, but we're already on to our final competitor. Xian So from Korea is out. She qualified in first position. And she's waiting. She's not out. She's waiting in the background. You can see her under the Red Bull logo. Yeah, and I think the first year that she was uh, on the circuit, she was able to beat Yanya on, on, uh, in lead. So I think, you know, if anyone can right now take the win um, besides Yanya, it would probably be her. Well, this is the last person who can, and she looks very cool and collected. She has a calmness when she approaches a lead wall that I, I really admire. She, it's just kind of a, she centers herself, she's totally in the zone. She's at home, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm really impressed. She, I would say, uh, before I might have called her a lead specialist, but this year I think she's really shown herself as a combined athlete. Um, 
she uh, I medaled in Brixton, um, and I think that was her first medal uh, in bouldering. So. Yeah, really impressive. Yeah, she did the most amazing dance when she came down from the wall because you don't often see her do it. She had this head thing she did, and it was it was just meant everything to her. Yeah, jumping up and down, just pure yeah. excitement. It was incredible. All right, well, sh this is our last athlete out. Currently, the leaderboard, Yanni Garnbrett, Imori, Jesse Pilts in bronze. All right, just keeping that foot on just for a little bit longer before going all the way. Cruising at the moment through the bottom. Up to the crimp. Look at the way she trusts that left heel. Didn't need the left hand at all. Blocked yeah. as well. You can see her on that last hold, she was using the bolt hole. You know, taking every advantage she can of the holds that are given to her. Really smart. Yeah, we saw that throughout the boulder season, really heavily utilized now, standing in it, in the screw holds especially. All right, that's the right toe in, drops down, rotates the feet through. Just getting a heck of a soundtrack to get going as well. Similar to I Mori foot movements and hand movements. Looking good at the moment, she commits to the moves. She will need to work her way through this section. Something else that I think is really cool about the sport, like uh, even though Jesse is sitting in third right now, the crowd is still really getting behind Shayun. Uh, you know, they want all the athletes to do the best they can, and of course there's a little bit of bias, but they're not gonna, you know, forgive <laughs> cheering to her uh, just because she's not from. Yeah, good point. You, you can hear them cheering her on. Right, she's got a right toe, now she flicks it. This is a tricky move. Swings the left foot down. Oh, but she bumped into the underclink. And that might have been one hand move, but there, Jessie Pilts is going to get the bronze. So she has a head and a hand, half in sort of shock that she fell, but half, I would imagine, as well as it sinks in, she's a bronze medalist. Wow, that was really surprising right there. She just seemed to do one more hand move than was necessary by trying to get that underclink. Yeah, it's hard in the moment. It can just feel really right to uh, move your hand to this hold or that hold, but uh, sometimes it just is wrong, and you know these routes are unforgiving in that respect. Well, disappointment for her, but it does mean that for the second year in a row, we're going to get a double gold medalist in Yanya Garnbrett, bold, bolder, and lead. Incredible comeback for her after that injury. Yeah, that's unreal. I'm sure she's super excited. Well, you're going to interview her in a sec, Jesse. So good luck with that. But right now we're watching. Do my best. Yeah, we're watching the very end of Shan's run. So it was that left hand underneath. Oh, so unlucky for her. Look at the flick. Very difficult to make that work. And then Jesse, I think, realised that she got the bronze. And the coach realised. Athlete is not going to stand on the podium. Such a difference in emotions there in one camera shot. Yeah. I think that also might be her dad, actually, so double emotions there as well. Yeah. I mean, do get a few dads on the circuit. There's one who's going to be watching later on. And smiles and hugs all around from the athletes. Yanya as well taking the win. And I think, Jesse, you might have to leave us here and go down to that stage. You'll have to stay a couple of seconds. I think there's a, a flower ceremony. So, yeah. so Jesse, you're going to say goodbye for the time being. Go down to the stage. Good luck with Yanya, and I'll see you back here for the men's. All right, so Jesse Pilts gets the bronze medal. Aimori, 
Silver for her, not gold this time. And then finally, Yanya Gamra looks exhausted there on stage. That is two out of two for her. Another gold medal. Unbelievable. What can that woman not do? Incredible scenes from her. Two golds in a row. And what a return after that injury. And in that interview I did with her the other day, she was so emotional. She just said, look, I've been through everything in the last couple of months. She doubted herself. She doubted her ability. She said she never understood the phrase come back stronger before this year. And now she fully understands what that actually means. Well, let's watch some highlights as we wait for our interviews this evening. That was what we just witnessed. Women's final done, a tough route. No one nearing the top. And we'll have a bit of a pause here as we get set for the men's competition. Jesse is down on the stage. I can see him, microphone in hand, waiting for Yanya. Pretty intense women's final, hey? I don't know about you watching at home, wherever you are in the world, but my hands were very, very sweaty. Tricky moves and not a single one of them was a gimme. Could have fallen at any second during that. It's very, very tough. Yanya there, you can see her running across the stage towards Jesse Grouper, who is waiting in the green. All right, well, let's go down to that stage, shall we, where Jesse is waiting with Yanya. <laughs> I'm going to ask some hard questions. I'm going to ask some hard questions for you. <laughs> It's a bit louder because of the yeah. music. I cannot really hear you. Okay, we're good. Okay. Yanya, that was an incredible performance. So cool to watch. How are you feeling? Tired, to be honest. After the bouldering competition, I think it was quite a lot of competing. So uh, I felt a bit tired already in the eyes of so. When I came outside, I just said, give it your best, give it your best climb. And actually, I left it all on the wall. And uh, when I fell, I was just happy with how I climbed. So I feel incredibly grateful. It really looked like it. It looked like you gave it everything you had. What was going through your head up there? The route was uh, hard just how I like it. Um, so there was actually not a lot going through my head because the moves was, the moves were like harder and harder from move to move and there were not a lot of rest in this route. So I just climbed and clipped wherever I could. So that was all. Basically, it was nothing in my head. That's so cool. So cool. What does it mean to you to come back and have your first competition be a double gold? I'm just incredibly grateful. Um, like, as everybody already know, it was my first injury and uh, I didn't know how to deal with it. In the past months, there were a lot of doubts, um, a lot of crying, a lot of negative thoughts, but coming back stronger than ever and winning two golds now is just uh, incredible and I'm super grateful. Congratulations, super cool to see. Well, thank you to Yanya. And yeah, she repeated what I was saying. It was uh, after that injury meant everything coming back and she does like to try hard out there on the stage and she would have enjoyed a route that tough. Let's watch some highlights as we prepare ourselves for the men's competition coming soon.